I'm Pauline Larson, and this is Pinky. Hi. Oh, I like to be here. It's kind of fun. Yeah, we're glad you're here. We're going to talk about our Heavenly Father. What's your father like? Oh, well, he's a skunk. He's black and white. Okay, he's not pink, right? No, I'm the pink one. Okay. Yeah, our Heavenly Father. It's, I'll tell you what, he's wonderful. He's the best father ever. And was your daddy a good daddy? No, he was okay. I had lots of brothers and sisters. Yeah. Well, our Heavenly Father, if you didn't have a dad, or not, your dad was never around, you've got a wonderful father in your Heavenly Father. And if your dad is a great dad, then guess what? You've got a great earthly father and a heavenly father. Well, that's good. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Well, today we're going to talk about our heavenly father. And first of all, we need to do the memory verse. Are you good, ready for that? Okay. All right, let's do it. Okay. The spirit that we have makes us children? Yeah, children. Really? You're a child of God? Yeah, I'm a child of God. Wow. All right, let's go on. And with that spirit, we say, Father, dear Father. Wow. Romans 8, 15. Well, you've heard people probably call him even Daddy. Yeah, I thought that was kind of strange. Well, he is their Daddy. Really? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful to realize that we have a heavenly father that's a father that's probably a better father than some natural fathers. Wow. And I know that when you're a baby skunk, you grow up and your, your parents probably have nothing more to do with you. Yeah, that's right. But our heavenly father never gets to that point. He always wants to be involved in our life, even when we're grown-ups. Oh. Because sometimes even our earthly fathers are involved, some aren't. But he cares. He's involved. You can't see him like you can see your earthly father, but he's real, and he's real in our life if we'll let him be. All right, we're going to go on. We're going to talk about PowerPoint, which is God is our Heavenly Father. Oh, okay. All right, let's go on and talk about the four things we learn about God. And you going to say goodbye? Okay. Bye. All right, let's go ahead. We go over this every week, mainly because I want people to get it in the spirit. Because if somebody, and there's a lot of people who are attacking Christians right now, and they're really not very nice about it. And they, when they want to ask you what's so good about your God, you know, or they want to tell you don't go to church because you can get some virus. No, you go to church, you can get healed of a virus, you know. People go to Walmart and go all over the place. And there's just, right now, there's a lot of people who are anti-Christian. So we put this up so you can understand. And if somebody asks you, what's so good about your God or, or about any God, you can say, well, God loves me. That's number one. And that's pretty powerful to say that the God, the creator, the world, the universe, loves you. Secondly, I have sinned. Meaning, I've done things wrong, but God forgives me. Isn't that wonderful? He loves us even though we did things wrong. And they all started back in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve blew it. And they lived in a perfect environment. I mean, there was, it was perfect. It was beautiful. And yet, there was a real devil. And there is a real devil. And we don't want to glorify the devil, but he's the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus came to give us life and give it more abundantly. That's John 10.10. 10. And Jesus, of course, is the Son. There's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three are one. And we're going to talk about the Heavenly Father more today, but they all work together. Jesus died for me. And when he did that, he created a, you know, there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. He created... Um, a new covenant, which we can't break, but we can have. And we're heirs, join heirs with him. And, I mean, good Lord, you talk about our Heavenly Father is hardly broke. I mean, when you're using gold as asphalt and you've got planets that rain diamonds, 
I don't, you know, he's, our, our Heavenly Father is extremely, extremely able to take care of us and wealthy. But anyway, Jesus died for me and he died for you. And of course, the fourth thing is you must decide to live for him. That's your choice. And, you know, when you realize all that God's done for you and how much he loves you, you want to please him. When you love somebody, you want to do what, you know, we need to find out what God likes. I know that sounds funny, but God doesn't like it when you sit there and run somebody down or talk bad about people. God doesn't like it when you cheat on your math test. There are things God doesn't like. And if you want his presence and you want him operating in your life and want to spend time with him, if you want God's results, you need to th do things God's way. All right, the four things. Now we're going to talk about Matthew 3, and we're going to talk about Jesus and how he got baptized. Now if you remember, he had a cousin, John the Baptist. Remember when Mary was found out she was pregnant, she went to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was pregnant with John, and John was his cousin. So John the Baptist, we're told, was the one preparing the way for the Lord, and he was the one baptizing people. Well, here he is, and all of a sudden, here comes his cousin. And it's like, wow. And he, he knows instantly he's the Lamb of God. He's the one that's going to pay the price to get God and his creation, you know, with, with his children reunited and family again. And so he's like, I shouldn't be baptizing you. You should baptize me. And he says, no. So he gets in the water. And all of a sudden, the heavens open, and there's a voice that says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And I'm sure everybody standing around heard, you know, they heard it and saw the, the light. And then the Holy Spirit, which is the third part, you see here a picture of the Trinity, the Father speaking from heaven, Jesus in the water being baptized, and then the Spirit descends like a dove. He is not a bird. He's not an it. He's a person. He's the third person of the Godhead, and he's the one who actually raised Jesus from the dead. He is the power, but he also has the personality like a dove that's gentle. doesn't push itself, even though he's the power. He doesn't push himself on us, and it's easy to offend him. You can grieve him when you say and do things that he... He doesn't like. And you can quench him, which means you stop him from doing what he wants to do in your life. He wants to use you to reach people. And so when you do things that he doesn't like or you don't make time for him, say, in a service or something, you either grieve or quench him. And so one of the things was the Holy Spirit alighted on Jesus and stayed there and remained. And if you know anything about a dove, doves don't do that. Doves don't stay. Pigeons do. I mean, you go out and about and you see pigeons. They're kind of dirty. They're noisy. They, you know, <clears throat> they're territorial. And they'll fight. They'll get, but doves aren't like that. In fact, there's a woman who um, moved to Israel. And in her yard, a beautiful white dove came to live. But she noticed that every time her family argued or when they put on a loud noise that wasn't very good type of noise, you know, wasn't Christian, the dove would leave. And the doves are very sensitive. Holy Spirit is sensitive. He remained with Jesus. We want him. He can, when we accept Jesus, he comes to live inside of us. And the God, they love us. But... The, for the power and, and for service and things, sometimes the Spirit comes upon, we feel His presence. And for that to remain and stay with us, we have to live and do things that are pleasing. You know, we can do things that offend God really easily. You know, when you get offended at people and mad or when you want to get even, that's not God. That doesn't please Him. You know, there's lots of things. Sometimes we just need to let things go. Somebody hurt our feelings or did something. Sometimes you just need to let it go. You need to follow peace. And, you know, we need to be people that are, um, sometimes we set people free that are 
that we could just continue to be mad at. And we just we kind of need to let them save face. I know that sounds funny, but, you know, Joseph was sold by his, his brothers. And he became a slave, and he was gone for like 22 years. And then he was in Egypt, and Pharaoh, he was helping with the famine, and then all of a sudden his family came for grain, and guess who? The ones who had sold him. And he could have had an attitude, well, forget you. Look what you did to me. Just go ahead and starve. But he didn't. And in fact, he said, well, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. You know, save much people alive. He allowed them to save face. And so if you want the Holy Spirit to continue to abide, and you want to have that relationship with him and, the, and, and with the, you know, the, with the Lord, then you need to do things God's ways and if you want God's results. So, going on with that. Our Heavenly Father is wonderful. And I just think how wonderful that He loves us so much. He's the Creator. And yet He knows you. He knows everything about you. I'm going to tell a story though. Sometimes though, kids' earthly dads are not that great. And here's the story of a little girl, and she wanted to see her father, and her father called her and made arrangements to come see her. And he, she said, can we go to the zoo? And he was like, yeah, we can go to the zoo. And she said, I'll fix you your favorite lunch, because he apparently liked a certain kind of sandwich. And she made it. She got ready, and about an hour or two before he was due to come, she got a phone call. And he says, hi, hon. I'm not going to be able to come. Maybe we can go to the zoo another time. I have to work. And she was so disappointed. You know, and there's lots of kids. They don't get to see their earthly fa fathers. They, they, they just don't. And it's, it's wrong. <laughs> and sometimes it can't be helped, but our Heavenly Father will make up the difference. And He loves you. And He's better than any earthly father. And if you have a good earthly father, then you've got both, which is wonderful. All right, our Heavenly Father knows so much. He knows everything. He knows the future. He knows the past. He knows everything. And you see that hair, that lock of hair? He even knows how many hair are on your head. In fact, the translation, when you go back to the original language, there's a scripture that talks about he knows all the hairs. It's like they... The translation kind of indicates there's like tags, number tags on them. He knows how many you have or don't have. And isn't that wonderful? He, he cares for you. And you, you know, you drive down the road, you see all these cars and people, and you think, God knows every one of them, the number of hairs on their head. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? He knows everything about you. You're not going to shock him with anything. He, you know, the Father isn't going to turn to Jesus and say, Good heavens, whatever are we going to do? I didn't know that about such and such. No, He knows everything. He knows in advance what's going to happen. And He can prepare you. You know, one of the things I like to pray, and I suggest you kids do this, Lord, let me be at the right place at the right time with the right information. All right, let's go on. And <coughs> here's a picture of a house, a heart. And 911. You say, that's kind of unusual. Yeah, you could almost make a story out of it, couldn't you? But think about it. This house um, is a home. And when we invite God into our heart, the heart, <laughs> He comes to live inside of us. We're His home. And He cares about our home. And He cares about us. And he wants, it's, the Bible also says he inhabits the praises of his people, which means he lives there, that word inhabit. And I think about when you're praising God, he's there listening, loving it. And he loves us. And, you know, he has good plans for us. The Bible says in Jeremiah 29, 11, he has good plans for us, plans of good and not for evil to bring us to an expected end. But then there's 911. What if somebody should try to harm you or whatever? You know, he'll protect you. He may, you know, you might lose your peace when you're about to go do something. It's like, mm, don't do that. Because God knows that there's danger there. 
You know, I, I think there's a lot of people who are in a plane crash or in an auto accident. If you ask them, did you kind of feel something like maybe you shouldn't go that way or take that trip or whatever? And I imagine most of them would have said, yeah, I just did it anyway. I've, and I even remember a story of a lady who was really mad, and she was mad at God because she went somewhere and she got robbed. And she said it to a pastor that I know, and he sa said to her, did you feel at any time like maybe you shouldn't go that way or to that gas station where it was? And she said, well, yeah, but I confess Psalm 91. And in other words, she was warned. She just chose to override it and decided to confess a scripture. Well, it's good to confess scriptures, but if God's trying to warn you not to do something, there's a reason. Don't ignore those warnings when you lose your peace. That's a big indicator that you kind of need to stop what you're doing. All right. Now, um, I'm going to tell a story, and this story is about an eagle. <laughs> and that's Little Baldy. And that's Mr. Eagle and, of course, Mama. And anyway, Baldy was four weeks old, and he did not want to fly. Now, for an eagle, that's kind of a problem because eagles are created to fly. And so they tried to talk to him like what was going on, and finally Baldy told the story of something that had happened. He had a friend, Squirrely, who was a flying squirrel. And one time, Squirrely came down to his, near his nest and said, I can fly. I'm a flying squirrel. And so Baldy, being kind of a kid who wanted to dare everybody, could never pass up an opportunity to dare somebody. I dare you to fly right now. And so Squirrely decided, well, I guess I better. So he jumps off and barely was able to grab on. He hurt his foot because he hit something on the way. And Baldy felt so bad, he helped bandage his foot. And both of them said, we are never going to do that again. We're not going to fly. We just don't need to fly. We'll manage. So he was telling his dad that. And his dad said, Eagles are created to fly. You're going to need to know how to fly. And uh, Baldy was like, I don't think I want to do this. And he says, no. He says, flying's wonderful. You'll have fun when you fly. And it's what eagles do. He says, that's why we have these big wings. And so uh, Baldy was like, well, maybe. And then his father did something that really kind of shocked him. That's the understatement of the year. He pushed him off the branch, <laughs> knocked him off. And so here's little Baldy. Oh, no, I'm falling. I'm falling. So then he started to flap his wings a little bit, flap his wings a little bit. And his father's like, see, you can fly. Keep on, you know, fly on up, back up to this nest. And he was doing pretty good. He was kind of gaining, coming back up. And then all of a sudden, he got real tired, and he started to go down again. And it was like, oh, no. I knew I shouldn't fly. I knew I never wanted to fly. This is terrible. And then suddenly, <coughs> whoosh, he felt something soft underneath him, and it was his dad. And his dad said, see, I wouldn't let you fall and die. And, you know, our Heavenly Father's like that. He may ask you to do some things that seem kind of, oh, I don't know if I can do that. But I guarantee you, if he's asked you to do it, he will enable you to. It will be a challenge, but that way people will know that it's God because they'll know you sure couldn't do it. So anyway, here he is. He's flying with his dad. And they, his dad says, here, let me show you. So he takes him over the mountains and takes him over the forest and takes him down by the water and and... Baldy's like, this is great. Yeah, this is great. He says, this is what you were born to do. You can fly. You have little wings, but they'll grow, and, and you can fly. 
And so uh, after a little bit, you know, he got to thinking about it, and he thought, well, maybe I can. And that's the thing. You can trust your Heavenly Father when, you, when he reveals something you're to do. You can trust him. In fact, the Bible says in all your ways to acknowledge him, you know, to trust in the Lord in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your paths. That's in Proverbs 3. And you can trust God. You really can. So um, <clears throat> all of a sudden he said, I think I'm going to try to fly. And so he did. And you can barely see him over here, but he's flying and his father's flying. And he's, he was having fun. And, of course, it took time for him to develop to be able to fly like his father. I mean, his father was matured with full wings and everything and feathers and, and everything. But as children of God, we were created to do a lot of things that probably you think, oh, I couldn't do that. But with God, you can. And he, you know, he enables you to do, with God nothing shall be impossible, the scripture says. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me is another scripture. And I'm telling you, just trust in the Lord. He is an amazing God. And you might say, well, I don't know. I don't know. My earthly father didn't do very much. How do I know God can trust God? Sometimes that makes it difficult when you haven't had a, a very active earthly father or one who kept his word. But God is not a man that he should lie. And if he's told you to do something, you can do it. So, but first of all, you need to be in the family of God. There's a very real heaven and a very real hell. And you do not want to go to hell. I know those people curse people and tell them, go to hell. And I mean, don't ever think that or want that for anybody. You say, well, what about Hitler? What about some of these people who killed millions of people? No, even, even for them. It's for eternity. It's terrible. But I will tell you this. God has a good plan for you. He's got a heaven that was created for us. We will have glorified bodies. We will. Jesus is coming back soon. But if he waits and tarries, then um, we will eventually leave if we of an old age, we'll die and go on, but we'll either go to heaven or hell. And once you're dead, you can't change your mind. You can't say, well, let me see how bad this really is. Maybe I might like it. I like. No, once you leave, the choice has been made. You can make a choice while you're still alive. Once you're dead, it's a different story. So let me uh, go on here and tell you, uh, in Romans 3.23, it says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every one of us needed a Savior. That goes without saying. And you know, uh, sometimes people feel like, well, I don't want anybody to know I did anything wrong. Seriously? We've all done stuff wrong. And in God's eyes, I mean, when you go back to the laws and everything, you know, if you wear two different types of, like, wool and cotton or something in a garment that's wrong. I mean, it would be easy to violate. In other words, the law was made to show that man needed grace. Man needed Jesus. He couldn't keep the law. And I mean, Jesus finally came and he died on that cross because that was the only way for us to be saved. And here we say um, in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. And see, we see this cross in between here. It literally is the cross it makes it so we can have eternal life and live in a very real heaven. I mean, God's got great things planned for us. And we'll live forever in a beautiful, wonderful place and streets of gold. And it'll be wonderful. And you say, well, I don't want to go to heaven right now. I got lots of life I want to live. Well, that's good. But this life, they say, is like a vapor. And eternity is for forever. So you do want to be saved. All right, so how do you get saved? Well, the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if we'll believe in our heart and say with our mouth that God raised Jesus from the dead, we can be saved. So you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, and you will be saved. If you're ready to do this, let's say this together. And you say, well, I don't know if I want to do it right now. You don't know how long you have. I mean, just all like with this... COVID virus and all this stuff. There's things that are happening in the earth. It's like, you don't know how long you have. You say, well, I'm a kid. I have a long life. Not necessarily. There are accidents of things. 
Make the decision today because, like I said, once you leave this earth or once you die, whatever decision you made or not made um, is final. And you say, well, if I don't make any decision, well, if you didn't make a decision, then you end up in hell. <laughs> you have to make a decision to accept Jesus. So let's say this together if you'd like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I do believe, I believe in my heart, and I'm saying with my mouth, God raised me from the dead. And so I know I'm saved. Because the Bible says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Now, it's wonderful when you accept Jesus. He loves you. But now, you need to find a good church. You say, well, I don't have a church. My parents don't go to church. Well, you have friends that go to church, and they have a good church. Ask if you can go with them. Or ask your parents if you can go to church, and all of you go to church. Chances are they, they will agree because they'll say, wow, my kids want to go to church. Well, I guess we will. And then get a Bible. And there's easier translations like the New Living or whatever, but different ones that are easier for kids to read. The King James, I like the King James, but it's not that easy for kids to read. So get a good Bible and just talk to God and pray. He's really awesome and he's easy to talk to. God loves you. And he wants a relationship with you more than you want it. So uh, you'll have a new life if you just said the prayer. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love to send you a gift. The address is on the, phone, on, on the screen. So God bless. Amen.